Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a review on affordable, fragrance-free foundations. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six different foundations. I guess this technically is not a foundation, it's a tinted moisturizer. But I have six different foundations that I'm going to review for you guys that are free of fragrance. One of my most commonly asked questions is what I would recommend for foundation for those of you that have sensitive or acne prone skin. And because I have sensitive and acne prone skin, I have also really been trying to be on the hunt to find really good foundations that are affordable, that have ingredients that I'm good with putting all over my face. So you guys probably know if you watch a lot of my skincare videos that I have a fragrance free skincare collection for the most part, I would say. 99.9% .9 of the products that I own are free of all forms of fragrance and essential oils. And I knew that I had to clean out my foundation collection and really do a lot of research there to find things that I felt better about on my skin. So let's jump right into it. Okay, let's start off with Maybelline Fit Me. So this is specifically their matte and poreless version. Unfortunately, their, I think it's called Dewy and Smooth is the other formula that they have in the Fit Me range. And that one does have added fragrance, which I was so bummed about because I love just a really nice, glowy, fresh looking face when it comes to a foundation finish. So I really want to try the Dewy and Smooth one. Maybelline, remove the fragrance, please. Oh my goodness. So this one retails for around $5.39 and you get one fluid ounce of product in it. On the front, it says it's their matte and poreless fit me foundation for normal to oily skin. And as far as ingredients goes, normally for my skincare videos, I really like to do a deep dive look at all of the different ingredients and talk through them with you guys and let you know if there are any concerning ingredients like irritants or sensitizers. When it comes to foundation, of course, we're going to have a lot less going on as far as noteworthy ingredients. So I will call out a few ingredients for each foundation, things that I enjoy. If there is anything iffy, then I will let you guys know, of course, but this isn't going to be the same type of thing as a moisture that's filled with incredible ingredients and a lot of the ingredients that I do call out are going to be towards the very bottom of the ingredient label so just keep that in mind while I'm going to mention a few it's not like we have a hundred antioxidants at the top of the ingredient label for these when it comes to foundation my biggest concern at the end of the day is that it's free from irritants and free from things that may potentially cause breakouts or clogged pores so in this specific formulation, we do have glycerin, which is a really nice hydrating ingredient. And I like that that's included in this formula because it's supposed to be a matte and poreless finish. And I just really don't love a dry matte look on myself. I'm okay if something has like a demi matte finish, but super dry, I'm not into. So glycerin is great. That's going to help to hydrate and plump the skin. And then this does have tocopherol or vitamin E in it as well probably not gonna do a whole lot because of where it falls on the label. This also does have titanium dioxide in it and I wanted to call that out quickly because in this situation for foundation, it's actually used as something to add pigment to the foundation and it's not designed to give you sun protection. So while I always recommend using a separate sunscreen anyway and not relying on makeup as your sunscreen because you often are not going to apply enough to get adequate protection, that's especially true here. I mean, it's not even called out on the label, but if if any of you happen to see that, it's not for the purpose of sun protection. So that's basically it as far as ingredient highlights goes. The one potentially iffy ingredient that's in this formulation is denatured alcohol. However, it's not in an extremely high concentration in this case. That's an ingredient that has the potential to irritate your skin, to cause sensitivity, and or cause your skin to feel dry, especially in higher amounts, and especially when it's present in a formulation that doesn't have other hydrating ingredients like emollients, glycerin for an example, which is a humectant to help to add that moisture and kind of offset it a bit. So in this case, it shouldn't be a concern, but it is on the label if that's something that you prefer to stay away from. And then aside from the ingredients for each foundation, I do want to let you guys know the finish and coverage and just how it looks and feels on the skin, because of course that is a concern when it comes to foundation. So I would say that this has a really nice demi matte finish like i was saying i don't like anything that's excessively dry on the skin and this formulation allows my natural oils to come through a tiny bit not as much as others but enough to where my skin looks fresh and healthy and just looks really really nice it's not super drying so if you're somebody that has 
normal skin and you're concerned that this would be too dry or too matte looking on you, I think you would still love it. I've recommended this to so many people and every time they end up wearing it, I'm like, what's on your skin? It looks amazing and I swear to God, it's always this and it's literally like $5. So really nice demi matte finish. I would definitely consider this to be a full coverage foundation. So if you don't like fuller coverage, then this probably is not going to be for you. But at the same time, I think it's something that you could sheer out a little bit if you wanted to and make it more of a medium to medium full coverage. So I I mean, I typically just go for it and go full coverage when I'm wearing this. But again, it's not in a way that just looks too stark on the skin. So love this one. I think if you have normal to oily skin, this is absolutely something you should check out. And I think you may be obsessed with. If you have super dry skin, it's probably not going to be for you. But we have other ones that will be for you that we'll talk about. So highly recommend. I have been using this and loving this for years. It holds up so well. Doesn't break up throughout the day. It just... I can't say enough about this one. Thank God. Oh, and I will make sure to include my shade names in the description box below if you guys are curious. I typically will just buy the same foundation in a shade that's darker for when I'm self-tanned and in a shade that's lighter for when I'm fair and don't have self-tanner on. So I'll include that below. There will be links to all of these foundations in my description box if you're interested. Okay, next let's move on to the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Makeup. I think that's such a funny name. So this one actually does call out on the front that it has titanium dioxide in it. It's a broad spectrum SPF 17 and on the back it says it has 2.76% titanium dioxide. So again, it's going to be used in this situation to add pigment. Here it definitely has much more than something like this Maybelline Fit Me would have. SPF 17 is not high enough to rely on for your sun protection anyway. You should always aim to use at least an SPF 30 or higher. But even still, if this was an SPF 30, I would tell you to use a separate sunscreen to make sure that you're using enough. Studies show that people do not use enough makeup that has SPF in it to get that even adequate coverage. So while it's nice as another step on top of a sunscreen, a little bit of extra protection, it's just not something that I would rely on on its own. And this one also has one fluid ounce of product in it. It retails for $8.99, so a little bit more expensive than this one. This is like stupid affordable, it's amazing. Obviously $8.99 is still something that falls into the affordable side, but few dollars more. So aside from titanium dioxide, a few ingredients that I enjoy within this formulation also include tocopherol and glycerin. This actually does have panthenol in it as well, which is the same thing as vitamin B5. Panthenol is a really nice moisturizing, soothing, and skin protecting ingredient. So I was excited to see that added into a foundation. And then this does have urea as well, which is another skin replenishing, skin restoring ingredient that's really, really nice if you have sensitive skin. Skin. As far as potential irritants goes, this doesn't have anything aside from the fact that it does have dyes added to it. They're at the very bottom of the label. It's the last thing on here. So this does have yellow six lake, blue one lake, red 28 lake, and red seven. Dyes are not going to be an issue for everybody, but they can cause irritation or sensitivity and they can potentially be an issue for those of you that are acne prone. Hopefully because they're at the very bottom of the label, that in itself means that it's such a small concentration that it shouldn't pose a risk. But I wanted to make sure I was mentioning that because I know some people do have allergies to dyes or they just have to stay away from them. And the finish of this one is pretty glowy to dewy on me. I do have combination skin that leans oily, so it may not end up looking dewier on you if you have super dry skin. It may just give you a really nice healthy glow. But this does definitely start to look a little bit oily on me as the day goes on and is something that I do have to repowder in my T-zone. I did film a couple times with this and I was like, what the heck, why do I look so shiny? And I realized it was from this foundation. And then the coverage here I would say is medium, but is definitely buildable. So you can get this to build up to a full coverage finish on the skin, but I would say it starts off more as a medium coverage foundation. So I do think that this would be a foundation that's better for those of you that have normal to drier skin types. The only issue that I've been having with this is that I feel like sometimes it starts to break up on my skin and just doesn't hold up throughout the day as well as I would like it to. 
I don't know and it's kind of hard for me to tell because often when I'm trying new foundations or anything new within the makeup realm of things I'm also testing out new skincare so it could just be that the times that I've used this I just haven't used the right combination of moisturizers or serums to agree with this foundation but at the same time I don't know it's like I feel like I shouldn't have to be super nitpicky about the skincare products that I use with every single foundation at least I don't want that to be the case. I want to just be able to use whatever skincare products I have and that I enjoy and not have an issue with my foundation breaking up on me. So I like the finish at first. I don't know that this is going to be one that I would tell you to run out and purchase because of that issue, but it also could just be me, like I said. So if you guys love this foundation and it doesn't break up on you, let us know in the comments below or if you've had that same experience as me. I'm just curious. I'm going to continue to play around with it and I will keep you guys updated if I feel like I have figured it out, but not going to be as flawless and long lasting as the Maybelline Fit Me. All right, next let's move on to the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Healthy Luminous Makeup. This one also does have sunscreen in it. It's a broad spectrum SPF 20, but the filter is octinazate, which is a chemical filter and titanium dioxide is a mineral filter. Mineral filters in general are better for those of you that have a sensitive acne prone skin and chemical filters like this can definitely cause irritation and sensitivity. I know that there are people that cannot use sunscreens that have chemical filters at all. So this may not be something that works for you if you can't use a chemical filtered sunscreens, unfortunately. This one also has one fluid ounce of product and retails for $10.99. So most expensive so far, but the most amazing thing is that there's a freaking pump. I personally would pay two to three extra dollars for a pump in any scenario because it makes it so much easier to work with, so much less messy. You don't waste as much product. I find that with both of these, because they don't have a pump, I often over pour accidentally and then I end up wasting product, which I mean, of course, is less of an issue when something's inexpensive, but regardless, I don't want to waste product, of course. So love 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 this pump good ingredients worth mentioning here include glycerin so again something that's going to help to hydrate the skin and make it look glowy tocopherol or vitamin e and actually a sorbyl palmitate is in this which i don't know that i've ever seen in a foundation that is a stable form of vitamin c and as far as iffy ingredients goes there's actually none in this foundation except for the actinazate so i would say that this is the safest so far for those of you that have really sensitive skin but of course that's not going to be the case for everybody with the addition of octinazate. The finish of this one, I found it interesting that this was called their True Match Lumi and this is just, they're super blendable. I mean, I guess this one doesn't really call out a particular finish, but I found that this one actually looked more like a satin matte on me than a really luminous, glowy foundation. And this one, I feel like had a much more glowy finish. Again, it started to make me look a little bit oily as the day went on. That didn't happen to me with this. It just kept my skin looking really nice and flawless throughout the day, and I really loved the finish of it. I do enjoy this a lot. It's just interesting that this one is supposed to be their luminous foundation because I don't really feel like that holds up for me. This one's also definitely full coverage on myself, but it's something that I think you could sheer out a little bit as well. So I would consider this to also be a buildable foundation, but you can definitely get it to full coverage if that's what you like. And I also do just feel like this actually helped to control my oils very nicely throughout the day. So you guys often hear me say how my natural oils will start to peek through in my T-zone as, you know, we start to hit like three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I found that my oils started peeking through less with this. So if you have really oily skin and you're looking for a foundation that helps to control those oils a little bit, you might want to check this one out, which you wouldn't think, I know, because of the name, but that was just my personal experience with it. So I personally feel like this would be better for normal to oily skin types, but again, maybe some of you had a different experience. If you feel like it's super glowy on you, I'm also curious, let us know. And the only issue that I had with this one is I found that it definitely did oxidize on my skin. So this shade at first looked really, really nice and I feel like was a good match for me when I have self tanner on. It started to look pretty dark after it oxidized. So maybe get a shade or two lighter than you normally would or than you think you need. And then I think it'll be a great option for you. I do really, really like this one aside from the fact that it oxidizes. So 
I'd recommend. All right, next let's move on to the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. So this one also has one fluid ounce of product and retails for $4.69. Do we not love a foundation that's less than five bucks? Like that is so amazing. Unfortunately, this is another one of those situations where within the photo focus range, they have a matte formulation and a dewy formulation. And for whatever reason, the matte formula has no fragrance, but the dewy version does. Uh, which is such a bummer. I did used to have this in the dewy formulation. I actually had a first impression review on it. It still is up. That's from like this winter, I think. And just upon further research, realized that that version has added fragrance for whatever reason. What the heck? Can we take that out of the dewy formula? That could have been bad. Hmm. Um, can we take the fragrance out of the dewy formulations as well? Isn't that weird? I wonder what that's about. I don't get it. You would think it would just be in both. Anyway, so ingredients that I enjoy in this formulation, again, include glycerin and lecithin, which is a really nice skin replenishing emollient. And this does not have anything in it that should pose risk for sensitive skin types at all. Not a single one, which honestly I was shocked by because if you guys have tested out this foundation or seen reviews of it on YouTube, then you have probably heard people talking about how it kind of smells like paint. It smells like paint. I don't, I don't know what would cause that, what ingredient has that smell, or maybe it's just a mix of ingredients together that cause that smell, but I was very concerned that this was going to have at least one, if not quite a few irritants because of that. Wouldn't you just think that something that smells like paint is probably not gonna be good for the skin, but in this case, I really didn't see anything that should be an issue, so love. And then the finish of this one is definitely the mattest out of all of them. And it's probably the most matte foundation I would ever wear. Like anything beyond that is too matte for me and will end up making my skin look dry. But I was shocked at how much I loved this, even though it definitely doesn't have that glow to it on its own. If I use skincare products and serums to help to hydrate the skin, maybe add a little bit more hyaluronic acid than normal or just a couple really nice hydrating serums, then this just looks super, super nice on my skin. I'm telling you, it makes your skin look flawless. Like it's super full coverage. So again, if you're not into a really full coverage foundation, this is not going to be the one for you, but I was shocked at how flawless I feel like it just makes my skin look. The only issue that I had with this one of the times that I was wearing it is I did have a little bit of dry flakiness around my mouth and it definitely did cling on to those dry patches. So while the rest of my face looked flawless, it didn't wear, I had dry flaky skin. So if you're really dry, if you have flakes, I would stay away from this one. If you have super oily skin, oh my gosh, I feel like this is going to be your best friend. It's so nice, holds up so well, very long wear, like, what, what? Second to last, we have the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. This one, again, I think these all have one fluid ounce of product. This is the only one that doesn't say it on the label. Sure, has one fluid ounce of product and retails for $7.99. This one also has a pump. I really like this packaging. It's just nice little, are these all glass? I think these are actually all glass. Anyway, I like this packaging, really appreciate the fact that there is a pump here. Ingredients worth mentioning here, again, include glycerin, and then this one actually has a lantoin in it, which is a really nice skin replenishing, skin soothing ingredient. And similar to that Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, this one has nothing in it that is concerning as far as being a sensitizer or known irritant. So another option that's going to be better for you if you have really sensitive skin. And the finish of this one, Okay, this is funny. So if you've been watching my videos since I restarted my channel, when was that even? Uh, like April 2019, I think. So over a year ago now, I was actually filming on my iPhone in my old apartment and I it was the tiniest room of all time and my furniture like just barely fit. There was like 
this much room on the floor for me to walk around so i was sitting on my bed in the video and i had my iphone propped up on my windowsill and was using that to film so it was not the highest quality video but i did a first impression review on this and i also told you guys in another video that i wanted to get rid of it because i just didn't really like the way that it made my skin look i felt like my face looked flat and super full coverage to the point of it just not looking healthy and not really looking like my skin anymore, but just looking like I was wearing a lot of makeup. So I was like, uh, I just, I wanted to love it and I just didn't. And then as I started to look for foundations that were free from fragrance and irritants, I saw that this was a really good option and I was like, okay, I want to give it another try. Let's just kind of try to play around with it, use it in a different way. So I went in with far less product and I actually used to also only use the Real Techniques Beauty Sponge to apply foundation. I have stopped doing that because I just feel like the bacteria that festers in those things as somebody who's acne prone, that's just like not something I should be using. They're never as clean as I want them to be. So I switched to brushes, which you would think would make this look even more full coverage, but I just used less product. And in doing that, it definitely was more of a medium coverage foundation that you can build up to be full coverage. But I ended up loving the way that this looked. So I'm glad that I gave it another chance. You know, everyone deserves a second chance. And I really do like this one. Nice, medium buildable coverage. I think this one still does look a little bit more on the matte side. It's not quite as matte as this Wet n Wild one, so I would consider this to be more of a demi-matte, satin matte as well. But I think it's really pretty. And if you want full coverage, you can definitely get there with it. So just use a little bit of product if you are using this one, like truly a little bit goes a very long way. And I mean, when this is called a two-in-one foundation and concealer, and it's meant to be something that you can also use as concealer, it's going to be something that is fuller coverage because of course, concealer needs to be more concentrated, help to cover up you know, spots, under eye circles. And while foundation does that, it's just not in the same way. So use a tiny bit, and then you can build it up to the level that you want. And then I feel like you'll end up loving this. I think it's a really good one. So I'm glad I tried it again. All right, last we have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. This is a hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer. This one has 1.45 fluid ounces of product and retails for $14. So the priciest so far, but you get a little bit more product. This is also the only one that you can't get at your local drugstore, but you can get it at Ulta or ColourPop.com. We know that ColourPop is definitely considered to be an affordable brand, so I wanted to include that in this video. I actually do have a first impression review and wear test of this one as well, so I'll link that below if you guys wanna see how this really holds up throughout the day. I do multiple check-ins, and if you just are curious to hear you know, more in depth on, I would say the makeup side of things because I don't talk about the ingredients at all. If you wanna know more that piece of it, that video will be below for you. So this one is actually interesting because compared to the other foundations that really don't have much worth mentioning. This one actually does have quite a few. So one of those, of course, is the hyaluronic acid, and that's just going to help to make your skin look really fresh and glowy and plumped and healthy. So very fitting with the name, pretty fresh. And then aside from that, this does also have glycerin and then a couple other extracts that are just going to help to make the skin look and feel hydrated. So one of those is apple fruit extract, and then this also has coconut fruit juice and coconut fruit water in it. So quite a few ingredients that are really going to give you that glow to the skin. And then this does not have anything in it that is concerning from an irritant perspective. So another one that I think is gonna be really great if you have sensitive skin. This one definitely is a very, very glowy, dewy formulation. It is something that you can get to chill out a little bit if you put a powder on top of it. So it's something that I can get away with wearing, but only if I make sure to use a nice setting powder. Otherwise it just, it would be like an oil slick on me. So it's very, very dewy and it also is very light coverage. You definitely can build it up to be more of a medium coverage, which I did in that wear test. But I mean, this one is going to be for those of you that want something that looks really fresh, looks just like your, it's like your skin, but better, which I mean, that's the purpose of a tinted moisturizer, right? So it has a good amount of coverage when you do build it up a little bit actually. And I think it looks really beautiful on the skin, but you know, if you just use it with the same amount of product that you would any other foundation, 
light coverage, very glowy. So if you have oily skin, I would say stay away from this one. If you are normal to dry and really looking for something to amp up that glow, I think you will love it. All right, you guys, so that is it for this video and my review on these fragrance-free foundations. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and that it was helpful for you. Again, keep in mind, just because something works well for me and does not cause irritation for me does not necessarily mean that's going to be the case for you, especially if you have acne-prone skin. I mean, I did really vet through all of these to make sure that they didn't have any ingredients in them that are known to trigger breakouts, but that is just something that's tricky in general because... Again, it's not something that's completely universal. So they're definitely, I mean, there's a list of ingredients that are known to cause pores to clog and cause people to get breakouts or blackheads. And those are the ingredients that I really made sure to look for that were not present in any of these foundations. But in saying that, just know that doesn't mean that this isn't going to be something that you feel causes a breakout for you because there's no way for me to predict that. But just know I did go through and look up all of the ingredients like I do for my other skincare reviews and I do stand behind all of these and everything that I said. So if this was helpful for you, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That really helps to support my channel and I also upload three to five days a week so you guys don't want to miss out on my next video. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that in the comments below. I really do want to do a version of this video for a little bit higher end foundations. I mean, nothing crazy expensive because I'm just not about that life, but ones that you maybe can't find at the drugstore but are really good options is like a step up middle tier price point. So if you guys are interested in that, leave that in the comments. Let me know which foundations you want me to talk about in particular. Other than that, I think that's everything. So my next video will be up in a few days. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.